Well, if it isn't another classic banger. Let's sig, anyone? Let's sig? Uh, what up? What is truly good with y'all? Back with another banger after banger after banger after banger. A classic on the channel. We have the Chinese combo for one. Of course, same thing I always get. Sweet and sour chicken balls, extra sweet and sour on side. We got the fried rice, we got the beef and greens, and we got, of course, the most magnificent thing you could ever have in your mouth from the Chinese place is the Vietnamese. Sprang roll, crispy, bubbly, ready to dip. Now, super excited for this one today. It's been super long since I've had a Chinese meal, especially in the channel, I would say literally six months, just in my personal life. On the channel, I don't know how much longer. Uh, I'm going to get back to a story time situation today, a lightly debaucherous party story from my Toronto life, and it's going to wrap up in some real talk relative to some internal human dealings that I'm dealing with personally in the forward movement of my life. So stick around for that. Before we do anything more, we must. Ba -ba -ba. Pa -pa -pa -pa. Poor. And what is the most culturally appropriate pairing for Chinese food? Diet Pepsi, of course. <laughs> what else would we have? But for real though, guys, what would you actually pair that you would think would be delicious with a Chinese food meal? Now, I'm not actually ever going to pair anything else other than a Diet Pepsi, Diet Root Beer, or a Diet uh, Dr. Pepper, if those ever get made again. Uh, just because I do love these the most out of any drinks. Uh, but, you know, I'm intrigued to know down below. What, what, what do you think would pair best with, with a Chinese food meal, you know? Something other than, obviously, like sake and things like that. Like, I'm, just actual drinks. I don't know. It's ultimately just a very greasy meal. So it's like, whatever cuts through grease, I guess, is what you would say. At least what I would say. Also... As per usual, just another huge shout out to those who've been sh shopping with the coldest water. Once again, just got another commission payout. It's very nice. Uh, makes my life super enjoyable. And once again, hope you enjoy the product because I really, really do. And I know I don't have to say it, but I'll say it. This is for visual purposes. Otherwise, I would literally be drinking out of this. But I use it for hikes, walks, etc., etc. It's been a blessing this summer, so if you're interested, you can save 10% in the links down below using code hoodie upon checkout. Okay, now, we all know that the first thing on a Chinese food video that we have to do is light a SIG, okay? So this, for those who don't know, is the SIG, right? Look at that, amaze. And this is the SIG light and sauce which is the sweet and sour sauce, okay? So we dunk, we dip, very, very romantically. Let it drip, let it drazzle a little bit, okay? And that there, my friends, is a lit sig. And we enjoy its majesty. Interior view for you, my friend. Stupendous. Too, too good. I was going to pour everything in this tray. It may come to that eventually. But for now... I'm going to work out of the tray because I think it's working pretty good. So it's a story time. It's been a minute since we've had a story time, but I have one to tell you. So me and my ex from this channel, Miss Hoodie, as you guys knew her as, no longer, of course. We met at a bar working together 
as you may well know. We worked on the block in Toronto called Restaurant Row. King Street. So on Restaurant Row, as you would imagine, it's all restaurants. And two doors down from us was a restaurant called Gabby's. It's kind of like a chain in Toronto. Bar food, sports bar, pubby vibes. So they used to have cheap wing nights and cheap drinks nights. So when her and I would get cut early or done, you know, fairly early, 11, 12 o'clock, Gabby's is like open till two all the time. So we used to always go roll up to Gabby's. Get drinks, get some wings, get loose, you know? These veggies are killing it, by the way. For my vegetable enthusiasts, mushroom, bok choy, a little bit of broccoli, maybe a dab of this, just to see. Unnecessary. Beef. So, as we were frequenting that place, we started to get this same uh, bartender girl named Jules. And she was uh, our similar age, I think two years older than us. But she was cool as shit. So we started having a rapport with her to the point where like she would kind of do shots with us, kind of hook us up a bit on the bill. We became very friendly and very cool. So, you know, as girls do when they're vibing out, they exchange numbers like my ex and her. I mean, we become like legitimate friends you know, outside of the bar. So they kind of start hanging out and shit. Having girls nights, what have you. So <clears throat> some months down the road, it's coming up on Christmas time. And uh, the girl, the bartender, Jules, she's dating this guy who's like in his mid 40s, early to mid 40s. Basically, her boyfriend, pretty much they're in a committed relationship. And uh, she goes, like, Yo, my boyfriend's having a Christmas party, but uh, I gotta tell you, like, just ahead of time, like he's really well off. Like he's 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 a multimillionaire, uh, but he's like super like chill, humble dude. But he made a ton of money in the start of the internet. He got rich young through like some sort of web development. And she was only saying it just to like, just, it's a penthouse. You're going to have to like ring up. We got to come down and get you because you need a key for his floor. In the elevator, he has his own key to get to his floor. <clears throat> yes, I do sauce my whole rice. Sue me. So... <clears throat> We get invited to this Christmas party. And uh, I had to work the night of, but I uh, made a deal with somebody at work that I switched kind of shifts. So it was like, they were gonna close. I would get off early first off. So I was able to get off at like, you know, 9.30, 10 o'clock. And uh, 
my ex was already at the party with jewels and shit. So I was like, should I bring anything like as just like a party gift? And so I worked across from a Loblaws grocery store. And in my head, I'm like, okay, Christmas, what do you do for Christmas? Fuck it, I'm bringing a poinsettia. I'll bring a poinsettia. Pretty sure we all know what a poinsettia is, but if you don't, it's like the standard flower of Christmas. It's like this red flower in a pot. And uh, it represents Christmas for whatever reason. I don't really know the history behind the poinsettia, but I do know that they're always at Christmas. So I get off, get the poinsettia, a couple pre-drinks at work to get socially lubricated, to walk into a, a situation that I don't know anybody other than two people. Which, by the way, I love that shit. I live for that shit. It's the funnest ever. And uh, so I roll into the party and the initial doorway is like the elevator opens at his door and you just walk into his house. To the left, there was like a guest bedroom. Uh, to the further left is his bedroom, big, huge open bedroom, huge like shower, open concept, uh, bathroom, like see-through glass, like his walls were see-through and shit, like crazy shit. And then this big set of stairs that goes up to the main space. So I'm walking up the stairs into this party, you know, pretty buzzed up at this point. And there's all the people there doing their thing, da 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 I get to the top of the stairs and I'm just like, like Simba style in Lion King. I'm just holding out this poinsettia, like, just like, uh, and I was like, I brought a poinsettia and, uh, the dude and I'm like, Oh, like, thanks. Like, it's so nice of you to bring like a poinsettia, like whatever. You didn't have to bring anything, but you know, that's thoughtful poinsettia, poinsettia. So <laughs> you start mingling in the party and the whole time everybody's like, every time I go to meet somebody like, Oh, like, are you the, your poinsettia man? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's me. Like poinsettia man. That's me. So like, <laughs> you know how as, uh, as parties evolve, as people get drunker, you have like those little inside jokes. So I never introduced myself as my name all night. And it got to the point where it's like, when you engage people and you get funnier and funnier and like, you're just having your moments, like you'll be like, we did shots and like, they're, they're like, poinsettia man, poinsettia man, like just shit like that. Like, and then you'd like round a corner and somebody be like, poinsettia man and shit like that. Um, so anyways, this dude's plays. Insan insanity, just full open concept, open concept kitchen. His he had a huge uh, projector screen, <laughs> the size of his wall. I'm talking a hundred feet by like thirty feet. Like his ceilings were so high. And then the highlight of everything beyond that was he has this like terrace, balcony, whatever you want to call it, massive. And in it was like on it, was cemented in a hot tub connected to a massive pool. And then when you lay in the, the pool or the hot tub, you literally are floating, looking up at skyscrapers, the city, the skyline. It's just, it's nuts. So like you're just laying in this pool like looking at like taller buildings just towering over you, like office buildings and other like condo buildings and shit. So of course, just like wildness ensues. There's actually this little Asian dude there who was just like the guy that jumps out of the trunk in the hangover. He was just like him. He was super wild and he was running around all night 
in this these little um, gold sparkly like one piece mankini shorts and he's like everybody in the pool so like you know we're all messed up i borrowed a parachute from the shorts the, from the dude that owns the place and then we just started all just like hopping in the pool doing these dumb like drunk challenges in the pool like who could hold their breath and like diving for shit and like just the dumbest shit meanwhile we're like doing like party drugs and just you know shots and just getting super screwed up and uh another funny actual part is the dude had a cat named mr icy <laughs> it was a skinless like a hairless cat not skin skinless cat a hairless cat named mr icy so like an austin powers he has like mr bigglesworth basically mr bigglesworth and he wore this his his collar was like a chain that got made with diamonds on it, it said mr icy so just like shit ensued around Mr. Icy, we're passing around Mr. Icy. Like I've never met a hairless cat in my life. And in my head, I always thought they would be way worse or gross, but such as a cat, soft as a baby's bottom. So anyways, night goes on, night goes on. Eventually, I'm chilling in the hot tub. And I see the st sun starting to peak. And uh, there was like almost nobody out there anymore. But they were all in, in downstairs. Um, it was that time at the party where people were sitting around, passing around the mirror, if you will, and getting into way too deep of conversations, way too late in the night slash early in the morning. So I went in, I fixed myself a massive drink just to fucking get myself to that point of like, I'm done. Cause I, there's nothing more that I hate than partying till the sun comes up and then just staying up or being like falling asleep as the sun's up. Cause it's just like, you feel like such a degenerate piece of trash. So I do that. After that, boom, have no memory, right? I wake up a few hours later. I'm face down on this like perfectly crisp white uh i want to say like chaise lounge is what they're called wake up i'm having the what the fuck moment where am i how long have i been asleep where am i sleeping kind of thing like what is this thing i'm on head pounding get up, look behind me. I can hear ruckus from downstairs. It's like mid afternoon. There's like two people in the pool already drinking. I'm like, I gotta figure out where my girlfriend is and shit. Walk downstairs. She's in the bed, puking in a bowl. The bartender Jules and her friend are just up kind of caring for her slash like still partying. You know what I mean? Uh, and then I look through like the glass partition to the bathroom and the dude who owns the house and his buddy are shaving each other's beards. Like just laughing and dying, giving each other beard haircuts and like cutting each other's hair all fucked up. I'm just like, I'm like, yo, can you, like, to my ex, I'm like, can you move? Like, we got to get out of here. I got to go home and die. Like, I got to take Advil. I got to hydrate. I got to get out of here. So it took, like, a good 45 minutes to an hour to, like, wrangle her to position to be able to even get to a cab.
to go home. So we go home, we die. Eventually order hangover food, get ourselves back. Of course, you always recollect and talk about how fun the night was and shit up until when it sucks, obviously, like the next day. Um, and so I tell you this story to say this. A, it was just hilariously fun and awesome. To a point, of course. And B... It's one of those things that since moving back here I'm like struggling to find acceptance in the death of that life or the death of the possible, the random, chaotic, arbitrary possibilities that li that life in that city provided, because because I personally I live for that shit. I love that shit. It's like that that type of stuff is what fuels fuels me because it's like it feels like a first. It feels like having sex for the first time, or it feels like doing a drug for the first time, or whatever. Just even eating a new food for the first time. Like it feels unexpected and, and chaotic and random and uh, exhilarating. And I know that that is not a sustainable way of life. And I'm not saying that I want to live in a place where I do that all of the time. I'm just saying that like, living in a place where that can actually happen is cool. But where I live now, it's like, I know, like I can predict everything here. It's like, I, it's just, I, I know the same faces, the same people, the same places. There's just, those things don't happen here. Never, and they won't, they never will happen here. And I understand that it's a coming of age thing. It's like, you know, I had my time in that life and, uh, you know, I appreciate I appreciate it for what it was and is. It's just mildly terrifying to like accept that that's gone and over, in a way. But once again, that's just that's getting older and, and growing up. Um, Just something I've been trying to reconcile in myself because I'm, I, I'm very fearful of life becoming stagnant and boring and the same Groundhog Day over and over again. Um, that said, though, I know that like even now if I establish myself a little bit in the next few years or whatever, like clearly I can always make new moves and go do new things. Like it doesn't have to always be the same and I can find myself in, you know, situations that feel like new and exciting and shit like that too um it's just a matter of taking the initiative to like refine those things and balance them accordingly obviously with your life and your lifestyle and you know not to go off the rails and go off the deep end and shit because you don't want to do that But that's the thing for me in life is just that scares me. That's one of my biggest fears is just stagnation, same old, same old, humdrum, never knew any, never any new real chaotic possibility, um, sort of like that story. And the thing is, is when I lived there, those stories, those things that I, I go, those things that happened to me were, you know, all of the time, like a couple times a month, right? That's how I've had as many good stories on the channel when I used to tell a lot of stories. That's why I had those stories, right? Because of that life, where I lived, what I was up to. 
So it's a trade-off though, because obviously having like an established base and to own something and everything, it's like, that's clearly the better play. It's a smarter way. It's, you know, it's just a, it's a better, it's technically a better way of life. But on the other hand, it kind of removes the living life aspect of living life. So I'm always torn. I got the devil and the angel in me. And, uh, and yeah, and for me, my next sensical graduation to, to reinstill that in me would be to travel because I've never really traveled. And I'm probably going to get into a place soon here in the next little, you know, year or two that where I can actually manage traveling pretty comfortably. But then it's like COVID. And like when I say COVID, I mean like this new imposed world due to COVID that is like, I personally think COVID's like some fucking bullshit, but like this new imposed world that has now made everybody's life like what I'm talking about, like very stagnant, one place, can't go do much. Can't look forward to just freely taking off to somewhere like you know what I mean so I feel like it's pretty relatable all around right now anyways but for me that would be the next step in my life would be to to experience some more of the world to keep it like fresh fun new entertaining uh, rather than resorting to like chaotic party life but yeah That's why when I put that uh, that community tab up saying like I've been dealing with mental health st stuff, like there's way more, like so much more. But even these little things are were, are parts of that, like almost like grieving the loss of my old life and coming to terms with that mentally. It's just things like this in life that you know they weigh on like people. People might view it like, oh, that's no big deal. Like, whatever, that's not a big deal. But to like, to some people that is a big deal in their life. And it's like, it takes an adjustment period. Like it really does. Just like when I first moved there, it took me an adjustment period to learn how to live there in that chaos. Same difference. It's just that I learned to love the chaos eventually. And it's like, I didn't want to get, I didn't want to, I didn't want to let go of the chaos. Cause I weird, I weirdly love it. So yeah, just a little bit of a tale for you, relative to the party life. You know, not the funniest party story, but definitely I would imagine at least semi entertaining. At least for me, it was in the time. But I ultimately wanted to lay the scene of that in its random chaotic nature in order to tie in these like internal dwellings and processes that I've been having to, you know, come to terms with essentially and kind of let go and accept like the death of a life that I, for the most part, like quite enjoyed, <laughs> even though debaucherous and very painful at times. <sighs> Highly entertaining and actually lends to a lot of growth personally, because you meet so many people, you have so many conversations and, uh, you know, you just get put in precarious positions socially and everything. And there's a lot to learn from that shit in life. You know, there's a, there's a ton of power to be had in, in, in being social and learning how to network and communicate properly 
uh, with people because communication is, is so, so important in life. So <clears throat> hope you guys enjoyed that one. I'm very, very full. Uh, till the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well. Stay true.